Hello there everybody, this is Krista and welcome back to the Krista Chronicles and today we are doing an animal plant tarot showdown of sorts. So I had the realization that I've got these three tarot decks that for at least most of the cards give us both an animal and a plant association on the card. And this is not like, it's, this is a little bit inspired by um, Lisa Pop has his this or that. But my goal in this is not feeling like I need to part ways with any of these. I really like all three of these decks. I like this category of deck. This is just kind of for fun because I realized that these kind of fit a similar category. I'm trying to make them straight. Oh my gosh. Yeah, okay, that's okay. And I just wanted to see how they compared, how they differed, just as like a, to take note in my own head of where I might pull one out versus the other. You know what I mean? I just thought, thought that'd be fun. So we're not necessarily gonna go through the whole deck. I'm not really sure what we're gonna do today. I just wanted to play, so I put them all in order and yeah, I just thought this would be fun because I was like, oh my gosh, I really do have quite, quite a few decks that give both plant and animal. So I thought it'd be interesting to just look at them. So let's get started. I didn't even say what they are. Oh my goodness. Okay. <laughs> Over here, we've got the Forager's Daughter Tarot. Now this is the edition you can get right now. I think it's, I can't think of what this edition is called, but... I'll have everything linked below as usual, and that'll be the one. So we've got that, Forger's Daughter. In the center, I've got the Forest Lore Tarot. This is my newest one, and I've been using this as one of my March decks. Loving it. And last but not least, the Animal Botanical, which is another newer deck, but I actually do have a whole very in-depth exploration of this deck here, if you're interested in really seeing what all of the plants, <laughs> there goes the boxes. If you're interested in seeing what all the animals and plants are in this deck, I've got that. So anyway, that's what we got going on here. Let's take a look. Now, for starters to note, the Animal Botanical, of course, as named, which is the, the inspiration also of this category, I should say. Truly on every card has an animal and a botanical, as suggested. Love it. <laughs> this deck, what's interesting is the majors are actually um, trees from the OM alphabet, which I think is really, really cool. Such a cool idea. And then the forager's daughter, for the most part, has some sort of like mm, animal, insect, bird, those sorts of things, and a plant, I'm pretty sure most of them, not necessarily all of them, and but this over here also involves some crystals, which is cool. So already we've got ways that they differ for sure, which is why in my head I'm like, they don't really, they don't fit the same feel, but they're in a similar category. So we're just gonna play. All right, so I already got the fool. I love over here, we have the rabbit. I think that's really interesting because usually we see the rabbit as the empress, which I don't remember what the empress is in this, but I really like seeing it as the that fool energy. Ooh, look at the tadpoles over here with magician. So interesting. So already, again, this center one is not really going to compare to the outer two when it comes to the majors. I know that. So I'm probably gonna be focusing on these outer two and seeing how those compare. I love this owl and raven. Now when you think high priestess, and at least when I'm thinking, okay, what animal would I pick for that? I think most people, raven, owl comes to mind because that symbology just really matches up. But I love, I think what the Animal Botanical does a really good job of doing is not kind of going off the 
quote unquote book when it comes to the kind of standard tarot and animal relations relations we usually get um and really just really considering like just such an in-depth knowledge it feels like of the animals that show up in here so here i believe we've got some kind of hawk which is so cool i really love that right and then the empress we, we get in an owl which is so interesting and over here we've got the rabbit which again very classic Stag, and I do like how we get in the Animal Botanical a lot of pairs. As you can see, two different kinds of owls. Interesting, we've got a mushroom here. I think that's really cool, but stag, all of these are very classic emperor energy. I do think what's interesting with the mushroom showing up is because, I mean, we cannot deny how phallic mushrooms are, so I think that's really a really interesting relation there. The Hierophant, I love. I almost wonder, initially I kind of had a thought of like, yeah, that'd be like a lot to use these together, but now I don't know. Don't you feel like all of these look kind of nice together? Especially these two here really pair nicely. Now I think something else to note is that the um, Forger's Daughter definitely feels, especially now as I'm kind of pulling it out and looking at it, definitely pulls pretty much exclusively on like woodland forest creatures where the animal botanical is much broader than that. I'm, I'm really excited to get to the miners because I'm really interested to see how these two compare. I think if anything, these two might feel very similar to me because we've got the forest lore. So when we get into the animals, it is very heavily forest creatures. But again, what I do, I do love how in the majors we get the, um, the ohm alphabet and then, you know, a few extras in the forest lore. We get the chariot. Love that. I'm kind of wondering if maybe we should skip ahead. Let's skip to the miners because we'll, we'll do like a quick, quick flip just to see. Oh, we've got another mushroom. Cool. It's so funny, like, I really do every once in a while, especially if it's a deck, like, at the time I'm really using a lot, such as the forest lore. I find a lot of value in putting it back to in order and looking at it again, because, of course, when I first get a deck, I flip through it, but if you don't get certain cards, you don't remember that they're there, you know what I mean? So, like, I haven't gotten a lot of these majors. I haven't gotten either of the mushroom ones, so I, I completely forgot there was mushrooms in the deck. Very cool. Just taking a look. See here, we do, this is one of the ones we don't get an animal. Which is kind of interesting how that works. I love that star card though in Forger's Daughter. Yes, I am already starting to feel like the Animal Botanical clearly again is like that. It's a bit more of a general animal energy. We get animals from all different types of climates regions, air, ocean, earth, things of that sort, where this is, uh, like, these two are much more of a focus on forest. So, I'm just curious to see. 
So already, uh, like, what I'm trying to say is that this one really stands apart of, like, already I'm like, yeah, I see where I would go to this one for a different thing than these two. Okay. All right. We are in our cups. Look at that. It's so beautiful. I do wonder if it'd be interesting to use the forest lore and forger's daughter in a reading together. I think what I'm wondering too is just by looking at them, you know, even if it feels like they fill a similar slot, do they kind of feel like they fit different times of the year? Because Forger's Daughter to me is very spring. And I am using the forest lore right now. It, I feel like it works with this time of year, but I could see like there being room for both where I use Forger's Daughter in the spring, forest lore in the summer. You know what I mean? And we're certainly getting different associations across the board, which I'm excited to see. Cause I was kind of, I was curious to see if there'd be any kind of uh, sameness between the cards. But so far it's like, we're getting different stuff, which is really cool because that to me, it, you know, considering that clearly this is a category and topic I'm very interested in, the other value I find in, even though they kind of fit the same category, having all three is that I'm getting a very different perspective from each of these decks. Because like for just the Six of Cups, we've got a sea turtle, a deer, and a tadpole. You know, it could all come together to kind of like mean something similar, but in all different directions, which I mean is why we like collecting decks, no? That's why I do anyway. I shouldn't say we. I don't know why you like to do it. <laughs> That's what I like to. So cool though, right? And again, I didn't really have a certain purpose behind this video. I just wanted to play today. I've been a bit in a bit of a, mm, I don't know if like video making slump is the, the right term. I just had a week where, I don't know, I've just been wanting to relax a lot more, so I haven't made a video. This is really the first one I've made all week. And I didn't really feel like doing anything else besides this, because I've been meaning to do this for a bit. I've had these decks in order for like mm, a week or two now, and I just haven't looked at them yet, and I've been really excited about it. So here we are. Look at that, the Nine of Cups. Yeah, I, I think it'd be interesting to even use these two together. Look at that capybara. Oh, that's so cool. Oh, like I can see the different perspectives here, which I really, really appreciate. I'm so pleased. I really kind of expected to see a lot of similarities, but... Ooh, okay, so that's there's our first one. With our Queen of Cups, we've got two frogs. It's still different over here. Frogs or toads or something, but different plants. We've got ferns, and this is, um, I can't think of if there's like a name besides the colloquial, colloquial one of Bleeding Hearts, but that's what we have there. Oh, the other thing I should say with the Forager's Daughter is that we get moon phases in, is it, is it? Which cards do we get them in? I want to say it's the court cards. We get the moon, so a moon phase association, which is so cool. So that is another way I have to say that it adds kind of a different flavor. I wonder if we should take a, a peek at the guidebooks. Oh my, ooh, okay, again. Two herons. So we are getting some samesies, which is interesting but I'm not sure exactly what plant that is, but we've got, I think those were irises of some sort. Okay, we've got the wand suit, and I have to say, um, 
The wand's suit in The Forager's Daughter, I I don't love. We get a lot of, a lot of the cards don't really have an animal with them. Um, yeah, I don't, maybe that's not true. I don't know. There's just something about it that I'm not crazy about. I don't really remember why. <laughs> I think maybe it's this a suit where we tend there are more where there aren't animals, but and I could be wrong. I could be just saying stuff. I think there's a card I get a lot that doesn't have an animal, and that's why I'm thinking that. So mm, disregard that comment. We'll see. I see here. There's one. We've got two different plants, but no animal. Which is again, this deck does not claim to be like there will be an animal in every card. I think my brain just seeks that out. So that's just my bad. I need to just, oh, I didn't not even switch this one. Wait, did, what am I doing? Oh my goodness. Where am I? <laughs> okay. Um, that's just me putting that on the deck. So I need to probably, okay, so this is the one. I get this card all the time. And I think it's just that, I don't know, compared to the other cards, I just don't love that card. I th so I think that's my own thing of like, I just keep pulling that card and <laughs> that's on me. Okay. Yeah, because the rest of them had animals for sure, except like the six and eight. But then this one didn't, you know, the whole majors didn't have an animal. So I need to relax. Relax, Krista, with that judgment. My goodness. Okay. Okay, another same Z. This one though, it's, this one is really unique, but again, much wider range to pull on. So probably... You know, that's not a super fair comparison, which is cool to see that, like, this is getting, like, extra set apart in my brain now, which is why I wanted to do this. <gasps> the rosy maple moth. I love that moth. Uh, I had one on my door two years ago, and it was the best moment. Top moment of my life. Because <laughs> it's, like, there's nothing quite like seeing this, like, giant furry moth that is like truly this bubblegum pink and bright yellow. It's so like this moment of like nature just makes that. That's wild. It's so cool. Anyway. Anyway. I love the moth thing we've got going on. Woo. Butterflies, moths. Question mark? Oh, and it, okay, no, and this is one I get a lot too. I don't really like in this one how the King of Wands doesn't have an animal. I'm okay, I feel like in my head, like the, I think the rest of them all have animals, so I'm like, why? Why does the King of Wands not have one? So that's, yes, I get this and the Eight of Wands all the time, which is why I think in my brain I was like, oh my gosh, the wands suits have no animals, which isn't true. But I do wish this one had one, but that's just, my own little thing, you know what I mean? I do love, look at how that Ace of Swords, there's a nest built in the hilt of that sword and love that. Oh yeah, cool. I mean, makes sense with swords. We've got a lot of bird action going on in this suit for sure. Oh, I love it. See, that's cool though, how it's still completely different directions. I love how all of these decks do the Three of Swords too. I, I think it's just, all of them are great. Don't you love, I love this Four of Swords, like really love that Four of Swords. And so what I think too, okay, here's what I'll say. This one, we've already set that apart. Between these two, what I'm noticing is that we get a bit more when it comes to the meaning of the card stylistically, you know, in the art with this one. Because this, if you're pulling the Four of Swords and you know a little bit about the Four of Swords, you're getting that like pulling back, rest, kind of like really taking a pause hibernation type thing in this card, you're getting that. Where in this card, you, you're not getting a Four of Swords meaning unless you know 
a lot about this type of owl and this plant, but also there's, you know, something to say for, of course, we're going off of the creator's interpretations of those animals. So, you know, also needing to kind of know that. So I think that's something interesting to note as well that I do think the Forager's Daughter is a bit more of a deck that you could pull out and do like a quick reading with and get something from it. I didn't really think about that because that's not something I usually, I tend to do if I'm going to do a quick reading. I'm just probably going to use like one of my tuck box decks or just my RWS. Um, because if I'm using these kinds of decks that come with these big beautiful guidebooks, I want to use it. But I do think because of what we get shown in this artwork, you could use it that way. Like, look at this, oh, I love the Six of Swords, with the cicada coming out of its outer shell. I found so many of those last year. I have a jar of them. <laughs> this is so awesome. Like, that tells you something about the Six of Swords, where this over here, not necessarily. Look at that owl. Oh, And I love I, this. But, the, but again, see, I know something about, I know things about magpies. And that they're little tiny thieves. Um, I think in the most fantastic way possible, personally. They just want the shiny stuff, I get it. But, you know, if you're not someone who knows, like, one, that this is a magpie, two, magpie behavior, you know, you won't be able to really read with this. Where this, we can get some context clues there. Anyway, this is my thoughts on that. But I am already, I don't know, because this has felt like a really fun spring deck too. But I do feel like it could, it really could also be a summer deck. More so than a spring one. Where this is one like I really want to have out right now. So while I've been enjoying this. I do think perhaps maybe it'd be better suited for the summer. And that's kind of how they'll both come out for play. Look at that. Ugh. Amazing. That's a brutal one. To be <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry about that. No warning. Anyway. I love the cricket. But then also this robin here as the page of swords. I think that's so cool. Interesting. It's this is so fun. I hope this is enjoyable to watch. <laughs> Cause I really I just wanted to do it. But I'm getting I am getting a lot of value out of this. So I also got this idea. I should say I got this idea from my friend Andy at Andy and Arcadia. She said that when she feels like she's got a lot of decks that like kind of are filling a category, one category in her head, she does this because either it reveals like oh. I don't really feel like I need this one anymore or like, oh no, these actually are different and I just kind of was slotting them a certain way, which is if what I feel like is happening for me here, especially with the animal botanical, like I feel like I've barely even gone back to talking about that one because it's like, no, that is, it is so different than the other two. So I should know. Great idea from Andy. So... I'd be curious, do you have any decks that you feel like fit the same category that you would do this with? Do you ever do something like this? Because I'm having a lot of fun. To the point where I'm like, I want to kind of purposefully <laughs> make more of this happen. Just like comparing stuff. I love comparing and categorizing. It's my favorite thing to do, so. If I could do more of it, I can't even. The pentacle suit in this deck is like, oh my gosh, top tier. Absolute top tier. I love this depiction of the Two of Pentacles, though. Oh, look at that. <laughs> it's so good. It's so good. Oh my gosh. I 
I love the squirrel showing. Honestly, I love all of these. I think these are all just the most perfect Four of Pentacles. Because Blue Jays, I've got my army of them, as I call them. Because I've got like, I've got so many Blue Jays that have just, they've decided my feeder is their territory. And so, yeah. Basically, unless you are a bird that is smaller than them, you are not, you're not making it to my feeder. <laughs> I have so many crows that will stay like on, I can see, it's like there's this barrier almost. They stay on this outskirts because they know if they come any closer, they're getting dive bombed by those blue jays. But then also with the squirrels, like you, they all like hide their nuts in the fall. And of course with beavers building their dams, like it's so cool, so perfect. Look at that, I love, that is, isn't that not so beautiful? I really love that depiction too. I like that this, this to me seems clearly like a baby rabbit, which is so cute. We had the cutest little rabbits um, in our yard last year. And I think one of them still, still burrows in our backyard. So very pleased about that. He is, he is always welcome. He is so cute. See, interesting, because we have two different kinds of squirrels. So I'd be interested to look in the book and kind of see the idea between the two different squirrels. Oh, so beautiful. This is kind of funny to me, because the Eight of Pentacles being that, like, you know, really hard work, practiced work. I'm thinking of gardening, how that really, you know, it takes a lot of patience and a lot of mastery sometimes. And what's funny to me about this uh, mole, which I'm thinking that is, is they can like, they can just decimate your garden overnight. So I think that's a really interesting relation there. I love the bees. I love that. I love the cat. Thinking of a cat lounging in a garden. We've got our neighborhood cats who they do love, unfortunately for me, <laughs> uh, to hang out in our yard. I say unfortunately because Stevie doesn't like them. Although she's getting used to them. I will say she doesn't freak out anymore. She used to freak if she saw a cat anywhere in the front or back of her house. Oh, so pretty. Now, this is another one I don't actually think has an animal. But that's not like across, the, now I'm like gaslighting myself. I'm like, did the other, some of the other courts did have animals. Yes, they did, they did. Pretty sure, I don't know. Look at these queen, oh, so good. And we got our kings, last but not least. Okay, so I did go end up going through the whole deck. <laughs> okay, samesies. That was so fun. Oh my gosh, I really, I like doing that. That was a lot of fun. Should we just end this by looking at the backs? See how the backs compare? All beautiful. Yeah, okay, I feel like I really got something out of that. That really kind of just solidified in my head where I think they're gonna work, where this is definitely a more kind of like general animal energy in that it just includes a lot more animals, a lot more different kinds of animals, I should say. Um, where these two, I think, more fit a similar category of just giving that woodland feel, but it's still getting into the animals, getting into the plants. But what I'm thinking is, I think this is a bit more spring and this is a bit more summer. And I think when it, that might just be all it comes down to. Which, I, I mean, I use my deck so seasonally that that works. Look at the backs together. Oh, so pretty. But other than that, I think that's all I got for you today. So let me know what you think. Um, do you have any more animal and plant decks? I'd love to know. Or do you have any decks that like kind of fit a same category where you feel like you could compare them? Because I feel like I want to do this with more decks. So I'd love some inspiration. But other than that, I hope you're having a wonderful day so far, and I'll see you again very soon.